when it came back in May 2017, we just saw a lorry come, came with um, boards, uh, I asked what they were doing, then some lorries turned up with absolutely disgustingly smelling stuff, and um, yeah, they, they dumped it there. Great big black pile, heap. Lived in the country for countryside for years, and we used to cows, we used to pigs, we used to all different smells, but this was something else. This really was something else. Across the UK, farmland is being fertilised with sewage sludge, which is mostly human faeces. 80% of the nation's sewage sludge gets spread on fields like this one, which happens to be right next to Penny's house. Unless you've actually smelled it for yourself, you will never know how bad it was. It was absolutely horrendous. It made us feel sick. I decided I was going to take my own sample. So I went to Boots, got a tiny little sample bottle, went into the field, took, reached into the stockpile, obviously with gloves on, took my own sample and uh, took it to the lab and um, we had it analysed and the results came back uh, a few days later. It was terrifying, really, really frightening. The analysis of Penny's sludge sample from 2019 found five pathogens, including salmonella. Concerned for her and her husband's health, Penny shared the results with the Environment Agency, the government body that regulates land spreading. The EA said they couldn't comment on a test they didn't carry out. But two years earlier, they'd commissioned their own tests. This is an unpublished report from 2017, which found that samples of sewage sludge destined for farms in England contained Salmonella and E. coli bacteria, antibacterial chemicals, pesticides, and persistent organic pollutants, including known carcinogens. Basically, a long list of things that could pose a threat to human health and the environment. When the spreading of sewage sludge was first investigated in the 1980s, the list of contaminants that regulators were concerned about was short. Sludge had to be treated and tested for a few heavy metals and fluoride, and then it was good to go out to farms. But a lot has changed since then. This report suggests that the list of potentially hazardous substances now finding their way into the sludge is much longer. And the regulators haven't kept up. The most widespread contaminants named in the report, none of which feature in current land spreading regulations, are triclosan, an antimicrobial chemical that scientists believe may be a cause of antibiotic resistance, glyphosate, a controversial but widely used herbicide, and a host of persistent organic pollutants. Chemicals that basically never break down, so slowly accumulate in the bodies of plants and animals. The sludge was also full of chemicals called phthalates, which suggested the presence of plastics and microplastics. The report warned that this type of contamination could ultimately make the soil unsuitable for growing food. Sewage sludge is put through treatments that are intended to kill almost all harmful bacteria like E. coli and salmonella. But test results in the report showed this didn't always work. According to one scientist we spoke to, there's little risk of getting sick from eating food grown in salmonella contaminated sludge. But for people who live near where land spreading happens, people like Penny, the risks may be greater. And when it comes to antibiotic resistance, the health risks from this toxic chemical cocktail take on global significance, as Dr. Andrew Singer explained. That sludge has E. coli in it, plus antibiotics, plus biocides, plus metals. All of that breeds something called an antibiotic resistant bacteria. So as you're maybe rambling through a field that's been amended with this uh, sludge, either last week or a year later, there is an elevated risk that you will, or your pet will, um, acquire this antibiotic resistant bacteria, carry it home with you, the dog licks you in the face, you have it. This is how it's transmitted. It's a rare event, but unfortunately, rare events matter on a global scale. So you, you only need these rare events to happen once for it to then become important for the world. The land spreading industry has become a tangled web of middlemen, brokers, contractors and subcontractors, and all those extra steps on the journey from sewer to field means that waste from different sources can end up mixed together, 
making it really hard to know what came from where or what's in it. The report recommended ways to improve the system and ensure the sludge is safe, but noted that cuts to the Environment Agency's budget have made it much harder to regulate the sector. In response to our story, the EEA said they take their responsibility to protect the environment very seriously, and that the unpublished report was commissioned to inform their new sludge strategy due out later this year. Close to three years since the report was first prepared. You can smell it, can't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite gross. Penny, meanwhile, is determined to keep the sewage sludge away from her home. In 2018, she managed to turn the trucks away, and after investigating her complaint last year, the EA agreed that the smell was unacceptable and rules had been broken. So this year, she hopes they'll be able to sit outside again. I turned detective back in August last year, in 2019, because I just feel that, or I still feel now, that um, something bad's going on. And I'm spending most of my time now on, I didn't even know how to work a computer, still really don't know. But I've Googled and found out so much information. Um, yeah, it's, it's taken over my life. 